We continue our reading of Lest We Forget, a daily devotional by author George R. Knight. Today's reading, February 1. Bates Gets Religion I sought the Lord, and he heard me. Psalm 34, 4. Bates's father had been a religious man and attempted, without much luck, to raise his son to be spiritual. In 1807, however, one of the revivalist waves of the Second Great Awakening deeply stirred young Joseph. But the interest was short-lived after a career at sea diverted his life. But the sea has a way of turning sailors' eyes to God, especially when they rode in small wooden ships. As Bates later put it, there was nothing in the stormy seas but the thickness of a plank separating us from eternity. It was in the face of losing such a plank that Bates dates his earliest religious stirrings. In the midst of a furious four-day hurricane that sent waves as high as the mastheads, the young captain in desperation did two things threw 40 tons of iron into the sea and took the unprecedented step of asking his cook to pray. The cook wasn't the only one praying. So was Bates' wife, Prudy. Beyond that, believing that her husband packed too many novels and romances for his trips, Prudy stowed a New Testament and other Christian publications in his luggage. Through them, the Holy Spirit did its proper work. Soon Bates had lost interest in reading just for entertainment and began devouring such books as Philip Doddridge's Rise and Progress of Religion in the Soul. The 32-year-old captain was getting religious, but feared that his officers and men might discover it and make fun. The turning point came at the death of a sailor by the name of Christopher. As captain, it was Bates's duty to oversee the burial, yet he felt so unworthy. Having done his best four days after the burial, he gave his life to God and promised the Lord that I would serve him the remainder of my life. The meaning of Christopher's burial not only affected Bates, He used the event to stir up his crew, the next Sunday preaching a sermon on everlasting life. Bates looked back on his conversion as finding the pearl of great price, which was worth more riches than my vessel could contain. His only wish, he noted, is that I could teach others the way of life and salvation. And teach, he would. That mission dominated the rest of his life. We serve a powerful God who can change the lives of our sons and daughters, and us also. This concludes our reading today of Lest We Forget.